In the break room with TWU Local 555, your locals podcast. I'm Eric Peterson, communications director, host of the show, and we are continuing our Getting to Know Your District Rep series. We have five new district reps, including one from a brand new district, and we're getting to know them. Today, we're talking to District 5. You can go back through our archives, wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, YouTube Music, Amazon, Audible, all of them. Wherever you get them, go back and listen to all of the episodes, especially our very first series of the Getting to Know Your District Rep series. So, District 5, Mark Kadoka, next in the break room. Hey, Mark. Hello, Eric. Thanks so much for coming up to PDX for our picnic. That was really cool. Oh, it was awesome. I, I was so happy to be a part be a part of that and be up there to support the, support the new district rep. It was great. I mean, I think it was really cool because, you know, we're tucked up there in the corner of the country and, you know, to have so many board members and then, you know, an actual district rep that wasn't even from that district show up. I, I think it meant a lot to them and definitely meant a lot to me. Glad to do it. So you are Mark Kadolka. Mark Kadolka? <laughs> yeah. Well, I am a... Uh... Born and raised in the great state of Texas, been an employee with Southwest Airlines now. 16 years was uh, in June. I hit my 16th year. Started in Denver in 2008, transferred to San Antonio in 2015. Currently, that is my home station, and I have no plans on leaving. So District 5 is uh, Texas and then some, right? It's correct. We have I have nine in the state of Texas, and then uh, the one outside is Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. So when did you first get involved with with union business? I actually got started very early in my career in Denver. Had a little mishap, um, which, you know, accidents do happen. But I was new, first union job. And I felt like it wasn't handled properly um, on the management side. So I reached out right away um, to a rep and helped me get through that process and understand. And uh, once we were done, um, at that point, I said, I would like to get involved. What do I need to do to get involved? Because at some point, there's going to be someone younger than myself down the road. They're going to run into a situation. I wanted to be able to help them out. You know, I hear that a lot. I think people run into a situation and they find themselves wondering, you know, maybe I can be my own best advocate. If I feel that way, maybe I can be for someone else. Sure, absolutely. And this this job, uh, you know, whether you're on the local level or the district level, you you fill many roles. You'll hear people call you a lawyer I'll call you a you know a shrink, a counselor, sometimes just a friend, a shoulder. Mm-hmm. You're you're a lot of roles in this job, and you have to be someone who's willing to give and wants to give, um, and that's something that I've always done. So, what made you want to take that big step and run for District Five representative? Well, I'm very proud of my district, mm-hmm. and uh, I just wanted to get to this next level. So, I've spent the last 14 years either as an alternate or an elected station rep or safety rep. You know, system board player for, gosh, nine years, I believe, close to 10. Um, and it was just always something that piqued my interest. And it, it was about timing for me. Uh, my kids were a little bit older, so I didn't want to be away from home as much when they were younger. I wanted to be there while they were growing up and, and see sporting events and, you know, those things. Yeah. Now that they're older, the travel is a little bit easier. And it, it was it was the right time for me to uh, take this challenge on. You know, safe to say, logistically, it might be easier for you to get your face in front of every single member in your district. Uh, yes, I am very fortunate in that. Um, most of my flights are about 40 minutes, um, and it's very easy to get for me to get around the state of Texas. I mean, even to get over to um, Birmingham is not, not difficult at all. So. so what were you hearing when you were running, and then what did, you, what did you say back? What did you campaign on? One of my main campaign promises was visibility and being in the stations. Um, Every station just wanted to see us, wanted to talk to us, and felt like there was a little disconnect um, and wanted us to be present. And I, I made that commitment, and uh, I can say as of right now, in the, in the, first, in the first little over three months that we've been here um, in the new role, um, I have touched all 10 of my stations. All right. um, now, some of them were in the campaign phase, so we're scheduling those next visits up, but I have touched every, all 10 stations. Mark, you, you were put into a unique situation. Company pulled the, the nuclear option on, on one of your stations. That's Intercontinental. Can you tell us, like, on a personal level, how did, how did you react to that? Uh, when I first got the, we, the, the union, got the notification, we were three weeks into this job. Right. Um, we are still, at that point, for us new district reps, we were still just trying to learn what our 
job is, what it entails on a daily basis. And yes, that nuclear bomb was dropped. And immediately I dispatched myself over there the next day to the station. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, was just there two weeks ago. And that was my fourth visit to that station, specifically to go talk to the agents for this. I don't want to even, it's not reduction in force. It was a closure. Um, so a little bit different, but it, it, it is a closure. So it was, uh, it's very emotional um, because you have to go in there and you are visiting with uh agents, members that their lives have just been turned upside down because now they have to make very difficult decisions on what are they going to do? Where are they going to go? You know, it's, it's not easy to just get up, pack up and move, right. you know, especially if you got a big family or, I mean, it's not easy for anyone, but a uh, very emotional time, um, each visit. And that's where you have to, you have to draw on what you were talking about earlier is that you have to be there for your members in so many different ways. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, again, sometimes it was just to be the ear because they, they were struggling with it and they just wanted to talk to you about it. Um, and then, and then our part is to make sure that the country company is following that contract and, uh, cause all of these members have contractual rights. So we need to make sure that, uh, those are, those are being adhered to. So a daily announcement, uh, you're there do immediately. And then, like you said, four visits mm-hmm. since then, how is it going for them? Uh, I think now, um, you know, it, th- they have a three and a half month time from from when the notification came out to when the station's actually closing. It's still not easy for them, but I think they've, uh, for the most part, the, the agents that I have been speaking to, they have accepted it. And they've, uh, you know, they've got their new stations that they're going to, their new homes, and uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna get out there to do the do their jobs and and uh, continue pressing on. Well, th- hey, thanks for an update on Intercontinental. I want to move the conversation along and talk about something that I talked to other district reps about that have this experience, and that is you were in the military. Uh, Yes, I was. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Actually, was in the United States Navy um, from, well, I was in the early 90s. I don't want to age myself too much, but it was in the early 90s, and I was based up in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, Bremerton, Washington, and I was a a fueler on the uh, USS Nimitz aircraft carrier. Oh, right on. Yeah. So uh, I really enjoyed my time. I I was very young. It's the first place I ever moved to out of the state of Texas, so it's eye-opening to see, you know, different parts of the country, and then you know, just in travels with the Navy after that. Um, but loved it. I absolutely fell in love with the Pacific Northwest. Well, compare and contrast your experience in the military with your experience in the Union. Well, it, there's so you need leadership is important. You need to have good leaders, um, and then you know everyone is going to look up to you. Uh, there is a, a chain of command, if you will, where you will start, you know, uh, I'll, I'll put it for the union side. You know, we have our local reps um, who are in in the battle every day and then they reach out to us at our level. And then, you know, we have our levels here with our officers and we reach out to them for help. So there is that that chain of command um, sort of thing. And then the brotherhood, right? All of us that are been out there in the trenches in the in the hot of the hot, the cold of the cold, the the, the wet, the dry, the you, you name it, you know the elements. Mm-hmm. Um, but you develop very strong relationships with, with the people that you work with every day, and that's the same thing that we had in the military. We looked out for one another, and we took care of one another, and together we were a very, very strong and powerful group. And uh, we are a very, very strong and powerful. Group. We certainly are. Where do you want to see District 5 in three years? Where I'd like to see us is uh, a very educated work group, all of us. The more education that we can share with the members, the stronger that we will become. I want to continue these visits. I actually love, love going to these stations and, and just talking to members. It, if you want to know the truth, it is the funnest part of this job, is actually being out there speaking to the members. Um, but that's why I want us to unite as a as a whole, as a group. And we can do that. It takes time, but we can do that. As long as we're all committed to it, we'll get there. Well, how can the members help you help them? The members just, they also got to want it. They need, they want to be able to, they want to absorb the, the information that we're getting out, the communication that we send out. They want to, we're going to need them to, you know, take that in and ask questions about it. Um, we're here for them. We're here for them every day, you know, 24-7. We will be here. 
He is Mark Kadelka. He is, am I saying your name right? Kadelka. Kadelka. Yeah. You're very good. It's a Pacific Northwest hat. It's all good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you are the new District 5 representative. Thank you so much for coming in the break room and talking to us about, you know, your journey so far to our brothers and sisters at Intercontinental. We're pulling for them. We got their back and we're thinking about them. Yes, every day we think about them. Um, and we're here for them. We're going to continue to be here for them. But thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Mark. Make sure you follow the podcast, share it, review it, do over what you got to do. Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Audible, trying to think of another one. YouTube Music is one of them. Social media, follow us, share us at TWU Local 555 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Go ahead and bookmark our website, TWU555.org, and you can learn more about Mark there. Just go to his page. I'm Eric Peterson. This is In the Break Room. We're going to continue our Getting to Know Your District Rep series coming up. Until then, remember, we are all. Five, five, five.